Hello all, welcome to the new video of signals and systems. In this video, we will study the working of by CMOS NAND gate. So before going further, let us understand what is by CMOS. So by CMOS is a semiconductor family which integrates both CMOS and BJT technology into one. So uh, and accordingly, since it is integrating both CMOS and BJT, it will try to take the advantages of both CMOS technology as well as BJT technology. So which may not be the case if CMOS and BJT were used independently. So what by CMOS does this, it takes the advantages of CMOS as well as BJT. Uh, like you can see here, I have listed out the advantages of by CMOS gate. So it has low power dissipation compared to BJT and it has high speed compared to CMOS and also by CMOS has large current drive compared to CMOS. So incorporating both CMOS and BJT into one uh, family and, and such family is called as by CMOS. So that semiconductor family has these many advantages. So it has uh, practical problems that is uh, fabricating by CMOS on a chip is uh, very tough. So it has uh, limited applications but uh, in those limited, uh, limited applications it has more advantages compared to when we are using only CMOS or when we are, when we are using only BJT. So it is important uh, for us to understand the working of by CMOS. Uh, technology to appreciate like what work has been done to develop this family. So in order to understand by CMOS I would like to take the example of by CMOS NAND gate. Let's see uh, how the by CMOS NAND gate works. Uh, and, the, I, I, and you can see that the by CMOS NAND gate diagram is already present here. So let's see the working of by CMOS NAND gate. So let's go straight to the working of by CMOS NAND gate. As you can see, there are two PMOS, PA and PB, and uh, four NMOS, NA1, NB1, NA3, and NB3. And also there are two BJTs, QP and QO, and both are NPN transistors. And uh, the voltage source is VDD. Let's say it is equal to 5 volts. Okay. So I have given the truth table of by CMOS NAND gate. So it is just opposite of NAND is opposite of AND gate. Okay. So when the inputs is either 0, whenever the input one of the input is 0, output will be 1. Okay. And when both the inputs are high, output will be low. So that is the working of NAND gate. So I believe that uh, you guys are comfortable uh, with drawing CMOS gates for any of the logic family such as AND, OR, NAND, NOR, etc. So if you are family with, uh, familiar with drawing CMOS gates, then this by CMOS drawing by CMOS circuit is fairly simple. So as you can see here, out of all this uh, six, six or seven transistors, seven MOSFETs, only four are used for logical purposes. Okay, so those four are PA, PB, and NA1 and NB1. So these four are used for logical purposes. Okay, so if you want to, if you would have draw, drawn CMOS NAND gate only these four would come into picture okay that those are PAPB and NA1 and NB1 and you would tap in the output somewhere here as shown in V out okay so this by CMOS NAND gate consists of another three extra MOSFETs those are NA3, NB3 and N2 and also as the name suggests by CMOS it also includes two BJT transistors. In this case, two 
MPN transistors. So, integrating both CMOS as well as BJT, we get these three advantages. Okay. So, let's see the what happens when we give inputs both inputs as low that is a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 0 so when we say a is equal to 0 it means the first input va is equal to 0 volts okay and also vb is equal to 0 so when we apply these two voltages these two inputs are given to na1 nb1 and pa and pb so when we give two low inputs these two pa and pb will get turned on whereas these two nmos transistors will not get turned on means they will be in the off state so pa and pb will be in on state so on state means this will be connecting means the current flows okay there is a path so this QP will get turned on okay and the current flows here this QP uh, transistor will get turned on and when this will get turned on there will be a emitter current so if we say this is IB and say the beta of the transistor is 100 we get 101 IB so if we had just used NMOS so that is CMOS technology we would have got just current as IB whereas in this case we got the output current as 101 times of this IB. So this large current drive is possible only in by CMOS. So compared to CMOS we got more current, more current driving capability. Okay. And also BJT has high speed switching speed compared to CMOS. So in this by CMOS for a uh, if we apply input as 0, 0, very quickly you can see the transition in the output. Okay, So the output will be uh, go from low to high in fraction of seconds. So it has high speed. And also since we are using CMOS, it will have low power dissipation at this side. So this is the working of uh, and also uh, I forgot to tell you what is the use of these two three transistors N2, NB3 and NA3. So what happens since we are using BJT it is important to remove the base charge from these transistors. Okay. So the N2, NA3 and NB3 are used to remove the base charge from the transistors. So First let me explain the other uh, working uh, for these two inputs that is when A and B are high. Then we can go to the role of these three transistors. So when both the inputs are high that is uh, this will become 1. Then what happens PA and PB will become off and NA1 and NB1 will become on. Okay. So, what happens? Output will be full to 0. Okay. So, it is attached to QO transistor. So, when both these are on, what happens? Uh, the current will flow here and this will turn it on and uh, the transistor, uh, this VO output which is here will get full to it will trace this path and get output as 0 ok so now let's see what is the role of NA1, NA3 and NB3 
the transistors. So let's revisit the case one where when both the inputs are low with the help of base charge uh, concept. Okay. So what happens when both the inputs are low? PA and PB will be on. So QP will get the current and uh, even QP will get turned on. So it will pull the output that is V out to VDD which is I. Also note that the base of the transistor QP that is this point is connected to the gate of MOSFET N2. So what happens? This voltage that is here will turn on this N2 transistor and this N2 transistor when it is on it will pull the it will pull the base charge out of this QO to the ground level which means that it will make sure that QO is in off state. So since this is a logical family it happens that at any given point of time QP and QO either one of them will be high uh, either one of them will be on or in off state okay so immediately when we give inputs as 0 the output should go to 1 but as a designer we should also make sure that the other transistor will go to off state as soon as possible so if we do not have the mechanism to remove the base charge this QO will take lot of time to turn off so we won't get the satisfactory results without the use of this transistor which is used to remove the base charge out of QO so that the transistor will go to off state so when you give input as 00, 0 if earlier this was turned on it will immediately turn off because this N2 transistor will make sure that, that all the base charge is pulled out of this QO and it will try to bring it to the ground potential that is 0. So that is the use of this N2 transistor when both the inputs are 0. So uh, now when the inputs were 0 and 0 QP transistor was in on state. So output was pulled to VDD. So V out was 1. Okay. So let's write it down. So here 1 means this is on. Okay. This is on state. And 0 means off. So output is in 1 state now for this input. So let's see what happens when we give both the inputs as 1 that is VA1, VA is 1, VB is equal to 1. As you can see these two inputs are also given to NB3 and NA3 that is both are these are NMOS transistors and MOS MOSFETs okay this is also NMOS. So when we give VA and VB both as 1 these two will get turned on instantaneously okay so when these are turned on they will pull the base charge out of this QP transistor that is they will pull the base charge of the QP transistor to the ground potential making sure that when we pull the base charge out of the transistor the transistor will get turned off so 1 2 will become 0 means this will be off off means it is the, now the output is no longer connected to VDD. The connection is lost here. Okay. So the only thing left is the logical part. When both the, these are uh, inputs are given, NB1 will get turned on, NA1 will get turned on, and thus Q0 Q0 is also get turned on because the current flows. Okay. So the output here is pull to zero potential okay so this is these are the uses of nb3 na3 and n2 they make sure that the other transistor is in 
goes to off state as soon as possible otherwise it won't be the normal functioning of the logic gates okay so when the both inputs are high what happens both this uh, transistor will get turned on and also uh, they push sufficient current to the bjt making sure that it will get turned on so this in the third in this case when both the inputs are high nb1 na1 and qo make sure that the output is full to zero potential because this is an off state so if the output is no longer connected to bdd that is logic high so these are the two cases uh you can try for the other two cases and check out the output uh, what is the output uh, voltage or uh, what is the value of uh, logic uh, what is the value of logic um, for the output okay so thanks for watching guys uh, please subscribe to our channel and also uh, kindly visit our gtc.org website as uh, those who are uh, preparing for gate examination to zoom summiting thank you